I'm so glad we've just started recording. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, we are also providing agricultural training for smallholder farmers to help families who are really struggling to have better food security, which is so important at this difficult time. And there's many other things that our team are doing as well. They're incredibly busy and hardworking, and we're making such a huge impact in the lives of people in Uganda. So before I say anything more about that, I'd actually like to hand over to Martin um, to talk about how this fantastic charity started and what some of his key memories are from the last 20 years. Hi everybody, this is amazing actually. It's lovely to see so many faces, familiar faces as well. Brilliant, fantastic. Um, I'm going to uh, just uh, share my screen now because I'd, I wanna take you through a few photographs that I wanna share with you. Okay, so I've got a very few minutes to take you through 20 years of the history of Act for Africa. So it's going to be a whistle stop tour, everyone. Um, if I've missed anybody out in this packet, I'm sorry about that, but it's probably because I didn't have a photograph from the early days. So I apologize for that. So Act for Africa started by an encounter actually with a, with a group of musicians and performers from Uganda led by Sam Kasango. This was in 2000, they toured and came to Manchester and we met them and they talked to us about the need they had for learning some drama. They wanted, they were great musicians and performers, but they wanted to do drama better. And that was the start of this process in this charity. Just note one young lady on the left here, who was one Martha Bonney, who was a member of that that team and uh, she's been with Act for Africa for the last 20 years as our accountant, full-time accountant, amazing. Recording in progress. Um, when Cathy went out to Uganda in 2000, um, the first thing she found was she was absolutely devastated by the scale of the, of the death and destruction that was being wreaked by HIV and AIDS at that point. It was simply just beyond shocking. Um, and so really the focus of what we planned to do changed completely at that point. Um, and so she came back and we met with a small group of friends and uh, we started this charity. And we quickly realized we couldn't do this work by ourselves. We need to take people with us to help us do the training on the educational side that we needed to do. And this is one of the first teams we took out. There's a young man on the left here, um, one David Baker, he'll pop up again later, quite significant in the history of Act for Africa. This is one of the early teams as well. We would, we would bring them together in, um, in Altrincham for a week, we'd train them up, and then they would go out for two or three weeks um, at a time and do, deliver the, the programmes that we were doing at that point. And, um, it was always interactive. It was always about being uh, fun and, and gathering a crowd. And it was always about young people, actually. Uh, this is one Paul McGee, who was an amazing performer, who came out with us at one point to Tanzania. We also quickly realized, actually, that a couple of weeks wasn't sufficient to deliver the training. And so we, we found this process would be better if we could put people on a truck, on an overland truck, and move them around from location to location. And we had three teams at that point. We had two in Uganda, one in Jinja and one in Kasesi in the West. And we had a team in Dar es Salaam in, in Tanzania. And, he, and the team, this team would move around and spend a month with each of these teams doing the training at that point. It was pretty basic. They were camping, camped for a month in each location. There's a very young looking Patrick Kagongo here. I hope you can see Patrick. And there's also, I think that's Daisy just there and Martha Bonney there and some other familiar faces, some of whom, Anna David Baker's there again uh, at the bottom. He led the first overland team that we took out. And it was always about training the trainers. It was always about enabling uh, people to do the work for themselves. And so we, we would train them up and then they would deliver the programs. Uh, it was also about performance, and this is one of my favourite photos of Patrick and, and this young actor was Matthew, he was a great performer, lovely guy. When we took people out, they came face to face with the scale of poverty in sub-Saharan Africa. This was not a holiday trip, this was pretty tough going for everybody, uh, but it was, they, they, we had some amazing people who came with us. I just want to flag up this, this young lady, this is Megan. Megan was 70 years old when she signed up for a truck trip with Act for Africa. She was a former nurse and um, talk about stepping out of your comfort zone. 
Megan was amazing. And then she fundraised for us over a period of 10 years after that and did amazing, did, just did tombolas every year, but raised a significant amount of money for us. Um, there's a lady up the top here called Dora Whitcomb, who's on, uh, uh, joined us today. Dora's been with us since the very beginning. She's been on every trip we ever took out and uh, she's done a lot of work for us over that time. This is our Tanzanian team. They were very musical, very able. It was led by Tamaini. They were great, they were really good. In 2006, we got our first significant funding from Big Lottery. We were able to purchase a vehicle for the first time. We were able to employ everybody as full-time staff. Patrick and his team became full-time employees for the first time. And we were also able to open our Act for Africa office in the UK. This is actually the mayor of Ginger who was visiting uh, Altering at the time. Lily Newman in the front, yeah, Lily Newman in the front here, and uh, Angie Tunstall, who was uh, important for us at that time. And Lily has been with us since the beginning. She was part of our strategic thinking from the beginning, and she's been a great fundraiser over many years as well. When I was looking to put this pack together of photographs, I was just actually quite blown away. We, we're a tiny charity, but the, some of the scale of some of the work we did is quite amazing. We trained the Kenyan police force in HIV AIDS prevention. We trained the Ugandan army in HIV AIDS prevention. And we delivered a massive testing program for HIV AIDS. We, you know, we've spent with COVID testing. We tested over 350,000 people at one point over, over a four year period. It's amazing, amazing work that was done. It was always about gathering a crowd. It was always about having fun. It was, and, our, and some of our team members are extraordinary performers. They're fantastic. It's about, it was about young people as well, focus on young people primarily. It was about delivering serious messages as well through that process. And then in 2009, we, we realized we could take out uh, medical students with us and we took out trainee doctors and nurses and that program ran until COVID kind of hit us um, and it was very successful. Uh, this is one of the teams that went out to Tanzania in 2009. This was led by Neil and Sarah Stanton who gave a year of their time then to uh, stay on in Tanzania and they delivered a pilot program for us, their training program. And then we got funded from the UK government in 2012 um, for a program project in, in Kasesi. Uh, this is the late David Pilkington, sadly passed away, but David was chair of trustees for many years with Act for Africa. Was then succeeded by Christopher Greaves, who I think is on with us today. And sadly, Chris, I haven't got a photo of you, I'm afraid, but anyway. Um, and this was uh, us, we had a fantastic meeting with the Ugandan Girl Guides headquarters team there. And that program in Kasesi was a four year program. We was train the trainers and we trained significant numbers of trainers who went back to their communities and delivered the programs to their own communities at that point. I apologize to uh, David Baker and Karis here. I didn't have a photograph. It's the only photograph I could find of Karis. This is obviously their wedding. But David and Karis, um, they, they gave a year to us as well. And they went out to Malawi and they started the first pilot HEAL program in Malawi, our health, education and livelihoods program. And that program ran for many years. Uh, it was supported subsequently by Sir Optimist International. And, uh, and we trained many, many women in, 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 the, in the HEAL program. This was the last trip that uh, my late wife, Kathy, was able to make in 2010. She went out to do a, um, a feasibility study to see if it was possible to start an early years education program in, in Uganda. And she went out with her friend, who's also a teacher, Hillary, and they did a, did a reconnaissance for this. Uh, sadly, Kathy never lived to see this, but uh, through the support of EFOD, who are an amazing group of engineers who helped us fund and, and design and build this building. We were able to open Cathy Center in 2017, which is a community hub in Mayugi, and it's uh, an early years center as well. And uh, the kindergarten opened in 2018. And up to COVID hitting, we had 50 children per day coming for early years education, high quality early years education, which was phenomenal. So it's been quite a journey, this process over 20 years. 
we've taken the Act for Africa uh, flag from the borders of the Congo. We've gone to Nairobi in Kenya. We've gone to the Indian Ocean in Dar es Salaam. We've been down as far south as the Mozambique border with Act for Africa through Zimbabwe. And we've been into Malawi with Act for Africa. It's been a heck of a journey, but it's been very exciting. And uh, I'm going to hand over now, hopefully someone's going to hand this over to, um, to Patrick. And he's going to talk to you about some of the impact of this program on the people who live there. Uh, let's give Martin a round of applause. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, 20 years is a grand milestone. Uh, and we are here today to not only celebrate 20 years of our achievement as an organization, but also 20 years to reflect uh, on the impact and transformation that our work has had on the lives of the people uh, here in Uganda and across the borders, just as Martin has taken us through that beautiful presentation that has lots of memories of how everything began, mm -hmm. how it began, and where it is right now. Uh, I'm particularly proud of what our history presents, but I'm also proud of the fact that the vision that was centered to mainly interventions that, a vision that was only centered to interventions that are geared to only HIV AIDS prevention and education have over time transitioned and diversified uh, to interventions around health, around education and livelihoods. And I'm proud of the team that we have here in Uganda, but also grateful for all the people that have enabled us achieve the enormous impact that we have in all that we've been in position to achieve in the course of the 20 years. I should briefly uh, tell you of the impact that our work has done over time. And just as I've said, a vision that has over time transitioned or diversified from interventions that were only geared to addressing prevention and education to now a broader, to now broader interventions. Uh, we've achieved and our health uh, interventions achieved and provided over a million, well, over a million uh, people with uh, HIV AIDS testing, awareness training, and tested over a hundred people for HIV and other uh, transmitted, HIV and other uh, sexually transmitted uh, infections. Uh, through our health interventions, we've been in position to distribute over 300,000 condoms to communities in Uganda. And we are also happy to be improving uh, the health and well being of over 225, to, sorry, to over, to over 100. Uh, 100 adolescent mothers, providing them with or improving their health and well being and increasing their ability to uh, improving their ability to control their sexual and reproductive health, and as well enable them access government and health social services. We are also happy that under our health programs, uh, we've been in position to avail access to clean and safe water to over 100 families, uh, a program that we've just integrated within our health, education, and livelihood uh, programs. And we are grateful for the generosity and sponsorship of this uh, from Lily Newman, who's here. I know she'll later on be speaking. Uh, through our education programs, I'm happy to report that we've had over 300 people educated and trained under gender equality. We've provided early years education to over 100 children that have gone through our kindergarten that is offering quality early years education in, uh, in Mayuge, in memory of one of our founders, Kathy Smedley, may her may he, may he, may he soul rest in eternal peace. 
We have been in position to support 13 girls in our Grow a Girl program. And uh, the progress has seen them through higher education. We are also thankful for the generosity of our sponsors that are seeing that this is going on and it's still on. We are grateful for that. I would also want to briefly talk of what our achievements have had and our agriculture program. Uh, we provided 35 households with reliable grain storage silos, giving them reliable food security. Uh, we've run agronomy sessions for communities, increasing their knowledge, equipping them with cost-effective ways to improve their yields, family nutrition and income. Uh, we've also provided goats and family, uh, family sorry, animal art husbandry, training women and girls, improving their economic independence and standing in their communities. Uh, through all this, mm -hmm. we've been in position to do all this, not in our own, I should say, but as, as I've earlier on said, it's an effort, a collective effort of a formidable team that is in this room that strongly resonates to the vision of this organization, strongly resonating to the vision of this organization. Uh, we've all, as Martin opened in his, as Martin said in one of his opening remarks, uh, the vision of Act for Africa was to address HIV AIDS infection as a result of the devastating effects that had ravaged uh, this country. And each and every person in this room resonates to that experience. We've at least, each one of us has either lost a parent, lost a loved one to HIV and AIDS. But we've gone beyond uh, having an experience that we resonate to, to having a commitment that has brought us together and it's that commitment that has enabled us to achieve all the things that I've tried to put across through our health interventions, through our education interventions, through our uh, agriculture interventions, and also our livelihood interventions that have enabled uh, young women to set up over 1,200 business enterprises, young women gaining economic independence, uh, improve their economic participation, and having over 1,600 young women go through our business training in finance and bookkeeping. Uh, our livelihood uh, program has also enabled us to establish over 90 uh, women's savings group, improving access to savings and loans. And we've also proud through our under, under our livelihood program we're also proud to have incorporated uh, a new program, which is vocational skilling through our adolescent mothers. We have 64 young mothers at the moment at our um, hub in Mayuge at the Cathy Center accessing our vocational skills uh, and particularly tailoring, uh, which was a complement to their health and well being. Our program that we are currently running under the small charity community fund. So with all these achievements, I should say we are very proud and feel that the 20 years of all these achievements are, are such a grand and great milestone to us and to also the supporters that have enabled us achieve this the individuals that have enabled us achieve this, and once again, the team that has enabled us achieve all this. And I want to also take this moment in time to express my gratitude uh, to Martin Smedley, uh, the founder and chair, current trustee, founder of Act for Africa and current trustee uh, of Act for Africa for the vision that started two years ago. Uh, I think, when Martin and Kathy came here 20 years ago, they never envisioned that this, would, uh, this vision would diversify to where it is right now. But we are so proud of all this that we are seeing. And God bless you. 
We are also proud of the sponsors and supporters once again, and special thanks and gratitude to Lily Newman, whose enormous support towards the work we've done is, is just beyond measure. God bless you so much for all that you've done and you're doing for Act for Africa and having Act for Africa at heart right from inception to today. Not forgetting the other members that we began with this vision and where it is right now. Some of them are still in this, are in this room, others have left. But for those that are here and for those that have joined us along the way, uh, special thanks and gratitude for all that you've enabled us to achieve to this day as we not only celebrate, but it also we reflect and think about this grand milestone of what we've achieved in the course of the 20 years. Thank you very much to everyone that has joined us today, Madeline, and the rest of the people. Apologies, I may not mention all the people that have been and are part of this, but I want to say your efforts and work towards all that we are doing means so, so, so much to us. And thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much, Patrick, for that. It was incredible to hear all the impact. Thank you, Martin. Um, that was really wonderful to hear the impact in history. Uh, Patrick, if you um, have the, a moment, we would love just to um, have the team introduce themselves with um, their names and maybe their roles, um, just so we can see who all is there in Uganda. That would be wonderful. Hi, everyone. I'm Harriet, and I work as a, uh, as a field officer. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Vincent DePaul. Um, I, I work as a communication officer. Thank you. Hi, I'm Grace. I work as a, I'm a teacher at Cathay Center. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Akuru, lead teacher at Kindergarten. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Koamatha, Finance Assistant, Uganda. Hello, everyone. I'm called Moses Waiswa, Programs Coordinator. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Teresa Nalumansi, the Monitoring and Evaluation Officer. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm Nankumbi Daisy. I glorify the name of the Lord for this day, 20 years. Uh, anniversary. We are happy for everybody who has contributed. May God bless you. I work as a field officer in Act for Africa, Uganda. Hi, everyone. I'm Nachuya Joan. I'm middle class teacher at Kathy Kindergarten and the Act of Africa organization. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, you everybody, and from um, tuning in from Uganda and being there. It was great to see all your faces. Um, we are going to move on now to our virtual tour. Um, we're, we have two parts of our virtual tour, so this is going to be the very first part. Um, if we have a moment, we're going to um, get Vincent just to briefly um, reintroduce himself and then also share a little bit about the video. But um, as that is happening, then Nicole is going to come on explaining exactly how to access the first part. Um, but I'll turn it over to um, Vincent again um, in Uganda. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, once again. Um, this is Vincent. So um, in regards to the video, uh, the first part of the video, uh, um, me and uh, uh, one who is called Eunice or Connie's, uh, we shall be taking you for a virtual tour just for you to understand what really happens at the premises. I know a number of people might have not been to the site, so this will be the right opportunity just to take a look at really um, our premises at uh, Mayuge, uh, that is Act for Africa premises uh, there in Mayuge district. So, so that will be the first uh, part. Then the second part, we shall be looking at some of the impact stories, what we've done in the community, not all, but just a few for you to understand what really, what we've been doing for the past 20 years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vincent. Nicole's gonna pop on now. And um, I'm going to share a link in the chat for you all to click and watch it elsewhere. Um, Nicole will explain more, more now. Okay. 
Hello everyone and welcome to um, our 20th event. We're really excited for you to view this tour. Um, so I'm just going to give you a few instructions on how to access it. Um, so basically, as you know, connectivity and the internet can be a bit temperamental. So we wanted to ensure that everyone was able to view it at the same time. So we have, we are going to be sending the link for everybody to view the video and then we're going to return back to the event. So first of all, it would be great if everyone would put themselves on mute. So when you're playing the tour on your own devices, nobody else can hear it. Then what we would need you to do is click on the chat box in below. And that's the box where everybody was doing introductions. And there should be a little red circle there now as well. And you will see a link, a YouTube link. And what I'd want you to do after I've explained this is to click on the link and that will take you to YouTube. Then you simply um, press play and you watch it and you just watch it on your devices. Um, and then we're going to return back and we'll do a bit of feedback about how we found the tour and what we and, and how what we found and how we enjoyed it. So that link should be in the chat. If anyone has any questions, please put that put that in also in the chat and I'll be able to answer it for you. So I think Morgan would have sent that now. Perfect. So what we'll do is if everybody's could click that link now, um, go ahead and watch it and please return back and then we will proceed with the rest of the programme. So hi everyone, thank you. If my time is correct, I think everyone will probably be finishing the video around about now. We will give it um, a few minutes just to make sure that everybody um, has completed the video and has watched it. Um, but just for now, it'd be great to hear in the chat what you thought of it. Um, please do um, put your thoughts in the chat. Love to hear what you have to say. Hi, everyone. All right, we um, are excited to hand it over to Lily Newman, who is a wonderful um, Act for Africa supporter. So I'm going to pass it on to Lily now. Thank you, Lily. Oh, thank you so much, Morgan. It's, it's just been a joy. And I have to say, I felt quite sad. My heart is absolutely in Uganda with our beautiful team, our amazing team in, in my Yugi. So Patrick, Harriet, Moses, Grace, Daisy, all of the team, I'm hoping to come and see you next year. Um, it's just a joy to see the work that you do firsthand and be reminded of the incredible success of Act for Africa. Uh, I just want to share with you uh, a little bit about my journey with Act for Africa and why it is, is such uh, an amazing organisation that sits in my heart. There are 168,000 registered charities in the UK and so many people ask me, why this one? Why is it this one that you've worked with for, for the past 20 years? And it really starts, as Martin knows, 20 years ago when I sat on the settee with my friend Kathy just after she'd got back from Uganda for that first trip and heard her heartbreaking stories of what HIV and AIDS was doing to ravage Uganda. And as some of you know, it was an expedition that I was supposed to be on, but my trip was cancelled because I was pregnant and it wasn't my first pregnancy. It was my sixth, but it was the first pregnancy that went to full term, resulting in the birth of my beautiful son, Max. And when I was uh, called, Kathy came back from Uganda. I thought she'd be exhausted from her trip, but she was absolutely on fire, full of life and determined to use all of her energy, knowledge and contacts like me to combat a fatal disease that was blighting Uganda at the time. And we all know that to be HIV and AIDS. She and Martin were the perfect combination because she was a school teacher. And as we know, Martin's a professional actor and they just use those skills to incredible effect. So as I sat there, Sarah, um, Kathy shared her stories of, of child-led households with children at the age 10 or 11 trying to raise a couple of children, other children from the family because they'd lost their uh, parents to HIV. And the whole time as I sat there pregnant, I just had one thought running through my head and it was there, but for the grace of God goes my child. It really was pure luck that Max was born into a family in the UK who could provide him with a great start in life. Even simple things that we all take for granted here in the UK, things like sanitation, electricity, a waterproof home, regular nutritious food, healthcare, and of course, the most important thing being education. But what if by some term of fate, he'd been born in poverty in some of the situations that Kathy had seen. 
I really sat and contemplated. I know that I would desperately pray that somebody from a more wealthy country would help us. And so from that first discussion with Kathy and Martin about their response to the AIDS pandemic and subsequently what they've done in creating opportunities for girls and women to level up and have greater choices, I knew right from the off I was all in, completely all in. Some of you know that I run a leadership consultancy and it seems only right and just that women in Uganda have the same opportunity as those women that I work with. But I knew first we had to get the basics right. And so initially I just went fundraising mad, setting up things like lunch a month groups for people to donate the cost of a lunch a month uh, in, in Manchester and all the way down to Somerset to crazy cycling challenges, right? Like cycling 226 miles across the Trans-Pennine Way and roping in every comedian or individual who would listen to me to be part of the fundraising effort. I knew that I really wanted to understand the situations in Uganda though firsthand. And so I had to go to Uganda. So I left my three-year-old son with my husband, Michael, for two weeks. He wasn't too pleased. And I joined Martin and Kathy in Kasesi and in Jinja for the first time to see actually what's it like in Uganda? What's the reality? And it was there, I have to say, I completely fell in love with the sights, the smells, the vibrancy, the energy, but most important, the beautiful people of this country. And many of these beautiful people are, are sat in a room with Patrick today. And I thought at first here, it's that sort of naive thing as an English person who's not worked in sub-Saharan Africa, I thought I was going to make a difference. Um, the reality was the experience completely changed my life beyond all recognition. And I found in Uganda with Patrick and his team, my purpose in life. I can genuinely say I've, I've lived and I've traveled around the world probably for, to about 45 countries, um, but I have never experienced greater joy or generosity um, from widows who have absolutely nothing, who have several children to raise, seeing them leave jugs of milk in the collection plate in their local churches to working out in communities and sharing meals of corn and eggs with local families, knowing that because they always want to give you the best, they're so amazed that you've come all the way from your home in the UK, that it's likely that someone will go hungry that night. Patrick, I don't know if you remember this day. I remember um, a day at a HIV clinic that you were running and Martha was there too. And, and I was playing with this gorgeous baby named Elijah. And this little boy who was about 14, 15 months old was so bright and so sparky and immaculately dressed. He was totally captivating. And Daisy, you were helping me to converse with his mum. And it was the most beautiful, the most perfect days. The sun was shining and people were waiting underneath the trees to be called forwards for their HIV tests. And later on that day, I remember being totally devastated to hear that Elijah's parents, both of them, had tested positive for HIV. And I just remember not sleeping that night because I was so fearful about his future. And it just came back to me again a there, but for the grace of God, goes my child, that I am so lucky that we have education in this country, that my child would not suffer that sort of fate. Because in amongst this beauty of this sort of amazing, fertile land, there are so many dark and repressive clouds that can be fatal, not just for men, but so much for women and young girls. I think the statistic is only 53% of girls complete their primary school education and 40% of those that drop out do so because of child marriage. Women and girls in Uganda are the least powerful members of society. And this is the thing that gives me so much joy and so much pride is that Act for Africa, your team, Patrick, does everything you can to change that through so many programs that we've run over the last 20 years, from the girl effect training to gender equality programs, and of course, the HEAL, health, education, uh, agriculture, and, and uh, livelihood programs. 
And I know, um, I, I hope you've got good mem memories of when we all came and decorated. I know Martin Nolan uh, was, was with me at the time when we came back in 2017 for the opening of Cathy's Centre and the decorating that we were doing together at the time. I think I did some wing walking to help um, <laughs> build the, buy the land for that. I had a team of five women. We all got on biplanes and uh, and raised as much money as we could for that. And the joy was going out with you and the team, Patrick, and meeting so many entrepreneurial girls and women, showing us things like bricks that men had made for the men that they were employing and fish that men had caught for them to take to the marketplace. And I remember spending some time with some women's savings groups and I heard attitudes from men were gradually changing. They were actually really proud of their wives and their girls and their daughters' resourcefulness and their capability to run businesses. And Patrick, you said something to me that really resonated. You said, if you educate a woman in how to set up a micro business, the whole village will benefit because she will go and teach her sister and her friends, her brother, her parents, her siblings, the whole community. But sometimes, sadly, if you educate men, in many cases, only the man will benefit from the riches that come from that. I know that the past couple of years with COVID has been so tough on our Act for Africa families that we work with, never mind the pandemic. With lockdown in Uganda, I know that that's left food rotting in the fields because so many have been, not been allowed to go and plow their fields and, and do uh, what's necessary. But also we've seen things like adolescent girls struggling for food and devastating floods that have destroyed our girls' meagre homes, leaving them vulnerable in displacement camps. And this has been the thing that's really stepped up my sort of passion for what we do over the past in order to provide, provide for those girls to make sure they don't fall behind their schooling. I've taken out a rain, on a range of challenges to raise money to buy food parcels and radios and education materials. And guys, you have been the life's blood to those little families, to those girls who've been struggling. And I've been so proud to see the photos and the film footage that's come back. Um, some of you will remember my 21 mile swimming challenge, which I don't think I'm ever going to do anything like that again uh, over the, the period of August because I knew we were desperately short of money. And I'm pleased that we raised £7,000 to keep those food packages coming. And I just want to share with you because it's been 20 years now and people keep asking me, why do you keep doing these crazy challenges? because there is so much need in Africa. How can you possibly make a difference? And my response remains the same. There, but for the grace of God, goes my child. But also knowing that my efforts are genuinely having an impact on a community or community 6,500 miles away. And the most important thing for me is knowing that that money is spent wisely. It doesn't sit with the government. It comes direct to you. 85% at least of every pound is spent in Uganda on the ground, changing lives of women and girls that we work with. And that gives me an amazing sense of fulfillment. I guess why I do this is captured in my absolutely favorite quotes of all time by Howard Thurman, an American author and civil rights leader. He said, do not worry about what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and do that because what the world needs is people who have come alive. And quite simply, guys, the work that I do with you makes me come alive. Thank you for all you do. Lily, that was amazing. Thank you so much. And we're so, so just grateful for you, for your support. And it's amazing. It's been 20 years um, of, of that continuous support. So thank you for, for sharing your story. Thank you for being a continued supporter. Um, and we're, yeah, like I, I mentioned, we're just beyond grateful for, for you and your support. So, so thank you for sharing your story. Um, we are now going to um, move on to the virtual part two. I am um, going to put the link in the chat box just like um, before, and um, you can click on that. We will give about another um, 10 to 12 minutes. Nicole will pull up the screen again, um, but if you need and um, have any questions accessing, accessing the link, please let us know. Hi there, everyone. Again, I think we may all be coming to the end of that video. 
we'll leave a little a few minutes just um, for those who are coming to the end of it. Also, for those who have finished, this would be a great time for you to grab your glasses because we are going to go into the toast section now. And um, so those of you who have done that, it is a little bit early, so if it can be any drink that you prefer. Madeline's got a Uganda cup, which is really fitting <laughs> for the event today. Um, so yeah, if you just grab that and we'll start to do that in a few minutes. And again, please feel free to write in the chat some of your comments and what you thought of the video. It's nice to see some of the kind words that people have already said. So keep that coming um, and then we'll go on to the toast. Okay, so I'm going to welcome Morgan back on and Morgan's going to take this section for us. All right. Hi, everyone. And then um, so grab this is a great time to grab your glasses, um, drink of choice, and we are going to do a cheers and a toast um, in just one moment. Um, so as we're just waiting for everybody to get their glasses, I'm sure you're all aware that we have been taking, well, our team have done a lot of fundraising over the last few weeks for the 20th anniversary. So we took part in 20 miles, 20 years. And the whole aim of this challenge was to have our supporters do 20 miles in whichever way they wanted to do. That could be walking, running, swimming. It could be in the house on a treadmill. It could be around the block, um, just in the local area across a period of seven weeks to raise money for 20 years of Act for Africa. And I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who got involved in that challenge. Um, so I want to thank Barbara and Jamie. So Barbara is here today and um, she walked with her lovely Labrador and is continuing to do so across parts in Manchester. And Barbara has been great to upload and keep us posted on social media. Erica Wise, thank you so much for doing your challenge. Erica actually exceeded her 20 miles and did 30 miles, which is amazing. <laughs> um, we'd love to thank Sarah. Sarah is actually doing hers on her treadmill at home. Um, but thank you for taking part. Myself, I've um, enjoyed my local areas and parks and I've also completed my challenge now. I want to thank Madeline, who also did her challenge on Wednesday and has raised an incredible amount as well. And Morgan, who is actually in Zambia and he's doing her challenge with her community. So thank you for doing that. And finally, Susie, who is one of our trustees, who is also doing the challenge. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's taking part. And I wanted to just um, give an update on what we've raised so far. So to date, we have raised £1,235 between us for the challenge, which is really great. And there is still time to sponsor and support everybody. Um, but for now, I want to say thank you to everyone who's taken part and thank you for helping us to reach that target so far. Great. Thank you, Nicole. We are. Hopefully everybody is ready. Um, so hopefully if you have your, your glass with you, but as Patrick mentions, 20 years is such a grand milestone. And we really wanted to take time to thank everyone who has made these 20 years possible, which is you all. So we would not be where we are today without your support. And we are very, very excited about your future. So if everybody could raise your glass. From every corner. And we would like to toast to 20 more years and beyond. Here's to the future. 20 Cheers, more everybody. years. 20 more years. 20 more years. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Yes, Cheers. 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 Everybody in Ginger. Cheers. Cheers. David and Karis, how lovely oh, bakers. to see you Let and your family. You. Look at the bakers. <laughs> Yeah, look at the bakers, wow. <laughs> oh, you got it, Congratulations. That's a big congratulations. Oh, Connie's. Hi, Connie's. Hi, Connie's. Oh, my hey, Hi, darling. Cheers. Congratulations. We loved your films. <laughs> oh. All right. Thank you so much for, for celebrating and cheersing with us and toasting. Um, to wrap it up, uh, Madeline is going to chat about the vision and direction for Act for Africa moving forward. So I'm gonna have Madeline come back on as we're wrapping up the end of our program. Hi, everybody. I'm going to keep this quite short, but I just have to say, as we look back on the last 20 years, I'm just absolutely blown away with what this organization has managed to do with quite tight, limited resources. 
uh, I think our team have some sort of magical power, actually, that they're able to take really small amounts of money and change thousands of lives, uh, really just with their presence and with their inner strength and with their inner resources. Um, and I just am blown away by that. As we look to the future, I couldn't possibly tell you all of the plans we have for the future. We're basically bursting with ideas and plans for how we can continue to impact the community. But in the next few weeks, I can tell you sort of the immediate plans. In the next few weeks, um, Patrick and his team are organizing a medical camp at Cathy Center, where they'll be providing dental and eye health uh, to the community who normally don't have any access to those resources. So that will be happening in the next few weeks. That's the way that Patrick wanted to celebrate the 20th anniversary. He said, please don't throw a big party. Please can we benefit the community? Please can we help them with things that they need help with? So that's the plan um, that will be coming together soon. Looking to a slightly longer future, we will be continuing with our adolescent mothers program, supporting the mental health and sexual reproductive health and vocational training for a new cohort of 120 adolescent mothers. So we've had 105 this year. In the near future, we'll have our next 120. Um, we're adding to that program all the time and we hope to continue that for a long time into the future. We'll be welcoming back our kindergarten students in January after schools have been closed in Uganda for the most part of the last two years. Our team have been amazing and have been able to do home learning and different types of outreach with the young children in a way that other schools haven't really been able to. But we're so pleased that kids will actually be coming back to Cathy Center for early childhood education. Um, we will be very, very shortly running a new program to support smallholder farmers um, to better harvest their grain and store their grain, to be able to sell excess grain, to earn some income for their families, and also just to ensure that they have a stable food source for their families, which has been so important in the past. Trying to think of all the other things we have planned. Our Grow a Girl scheme is continuing to support um, seven young women who are progressing through their secondary education and beyond. Um, and that's really just a snapshot. We have other plans in the works for further down the line. We're hoping to build a new vocational training center on Cathy Center. I don't know if you remember seeing the field. We have a spare piece of land at Cathy Center. We have plans uh, drawn up to build a new vocational training center there for uh, vulnerable young mothers and other young women. And we also plan to reach another community with a water project in the next year as well to continue outreach that way. Uh, we've got plans in the works to also reach out to 10,000 people in our fishing community in the Mayuge district with information around COVID disinformation, trying to dispel some of the myths around COVID, and also trying to reduce stigma for people who have experienced COVID-19. There's more. I won't go on and on. I just want you to know that we've got lots of plans. We'd love for you to stay on for the ride, stay on for the journey as supporters. We'd love to tell you all about this work as it unfolds and keep you in touch with our team and with the people on the ground. And also want you to know that we're continually trying to support our team in Uganda with new trainings, new skills, uh, new ways that they can support the people around them. So we're continuing to build them up. And although we're a small charity, we really are growing. So yeah, please do stay in touch so we can tell you all about it as it unfolds. Great, thank you so much, Madeline. It's very exciting to hear what is to come for the future. Um, like we said, 20 years, 20 years and beyond. And before I, I um, head it over to uh, Martin, I just wanted to share really briefly um, just a couple ways to remain involved. Um, we absolutely love staying and um, it's so important to us to share the impact that is being um, created with our program. So one of the first ways is follow, following us on social media channels. We have some great updates and some great impact stories, as well as some exciting new things in the future. So make sure you are following us on social media, as well as our newsletter. Please make sure you are signed up to our newsletter. Um, that's very easy to do on our website. Um, this way, we can share those impact stories um, with you. And so we continue to um, sh send newsletters and updates that way as well. And then finally, um, the 20th anniversary campaign is still being is still going to continue. Um, we have the upcoming Giving Tuesday, which is obviously a big celebration um, worldwide to to give back on on that 
great day. And um, with we have a goal of raising 6,000 pounds. So if you are still interested in either doing a small to peer fundraiser, um, your, own, your own fundraiser or donating to our campaign um, page, uh, that is still live as well. So I will be sharing it in the chat box where you can um, donate. Nicole is also sharing where our social media channels are. Um, but lastly, just always do not hesitate to reach out. So that being said, I am going to hand it over to Martin um, for the last final words. Thank you, Morgan. Um, yeah, so just I want to thank Madeline and her team actually for organising today's event. Uh, it's been very, very slick. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, I just want to say thank you as well to the, to the UK team. Um, the UK team over the years, actually. Um, there are people who've been with us, uh, you know, going back years and uh, made a significant contribution. Um, I also want to really thank Patrick and his team because uh, they do the actual hard work on the ground and um, they just so faithful and done it so for so many years. I'd like to thank Vincent for the tour, which was great. Really, really good to see it all still, you know, it's still, it's still everything's still working, which is great. Um, and really, I just want to thank you all for your support, which we couldn't do this. We couldn't do this without, you know, we just couldn't do any of this without you. you you're the ones who make, make this possible. Um, like I said at the beginning, you know, Kathy and I realized very early on we couldn't do this by ourselves. We needed people to help us. And uh, there are people on this on this today who go back years with us, which is amazing. So thank you so much for um, sticking with us through thick and thin. Um, and um, yeah, I, I remember when we started, you know, the first visit and uh, back 20 years ago, I remember saying to, uh, to Patrick and the team at the time, we're here for the long term. And they kind of looked at me a bit skeptically, you know, I think people just blew in and blew out and were gone in, um, in a few weeks and never saw them again. But we actually meant it. We meant that we would be with them for the long term. I never dreamt it would actually be 20 years. So we'd still be doing this which is fantastic um yeah so here, here's to the next 20 years of this really amazing crazy exciting journey that we've been on and uh where as madeline says wherever that goes and um yeah just just please continue to support us and stick with us because it's um, it's going to be exciting it's going to be fun and we'd love to keep telling you about what we do so thank you so much thank you Wonderful. Thank you so much, Martin. And thank you everyone for being here. One quick last thing. I'm going to invite Nicole back for um, another thank you. And then um, we will wrap it up. Yes, thank you, Martin. Um, I just want to say how much I've really enjoyed um, the event today, hearing everybody's words of encouragement and all the stories and watching the impact videos. It's been amazing to see all that we've done. Um, I really want to just thank all of our volunteers. So we are, our team has expanded in the UK, but a lot of what we do, we wouldn't be able to do without our amazing volunteers and the amount of time and effort they put in. Um, so particularly we want to kind of highlight some of the volunteers who supported us specifically with this 20th anniversary. So we'd like to thank James. Um, I'm not sure if he's with us today. I will just share. Um, I don't think it's with us today, but James helped us with um, the design and designing our um, some of the graphics that you see today. Um, and that's taken some time to sit down and think about what we want to see, how we want things to be. And I just thank James for actually, you know, making that time to do that because it really does make a difference. We'd like to say a huge thank you to Zora. Zora is a huge part of our team in the UK. And um, Zora recently as well with her children have raised over 500 pounds to buy two sewing machines for our adolescent mothers project, which is amazing. Um, Zora's great in terms of the admin side of what we do. Um, so Zora, thank you so much for what you do. I've learned so much from you and, and everything you've, you've done for the organization up to this point. Jasmine, again, Jasmine's helped us with these wonderful virtual screens that you see um, and other design pieces of work. Really couldn't have done that without you, Jasmine. So thank you so much for all your hard work. And Carnice, our volunteer from Uganda, we'd love to, we saw Carnice in her video. She was an Act for Africa intern, but it's great to see can he's been able to use her skills and to support us in that way. So just thank you so much to our volunteers. We really, as Martin said previously, we couldn't do what we do without you. So thank you so much.
Wonderful. We are going to take this time. That is the end of our celebration. However, we are going to take this time for about the next 25, 30 minutes, um, just an after party to share memories of Act for Africa. So you're more than welcome to stay on. Um, we're going to be chatting, just sharing memories. And um, again, just so appreciative for you showing up and celebrating with us. So cheers to 20 more, 20 more great years and have such a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you everyone for coming. I would absolutely love to hear from anyone who has memories from the last 20 years, either memories from visits to Uganda or also memories from our team in Uganda. If there's anything that you'd really like to say or like to share, this is a great time to do that. Thank you, uh, Madeline. I, I, you know, I think, I think there are several things. I, all I've got in terms of my memories of uh, time in Uganda is complete joy, but also some really really funny moments like uh, there was a time when we were in Kasesi and the team were challenged by a little uh, community school to a football match and the football field was on the side of a hill and they were they were incredibly generous because they gave us the goal at the bottom of the hill and they took the goal at the top of the hill and I think I lasted about 15 maybe 20 minutes of running around and I, I, I sort of decided I needed to be subbed really quickly. Can I please go and sit down? And so I was sitting watching the rest of them valiantly. The, the men were certainly significantly fitter than me, um, the, the men in our team at the time. And this young boy came and sat next to me and he said, you are from England. And I said, yes, I am. He said, you must spend less time in your car and much more time on your legs. He says, maybe if you don't drive this year, you come back next year, maybe you can run. <laughs> you know, it's just really brilliant. <laughs> and then one, one other thing I remember, because um, we always used to have suntan lotion, you know, factor 50 to plaster all over us. And, and uh, one small boy just studying us as we were putting this suntan lotion on and came over and asked us and said, why are you putting more white on your white? <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was a great question. So, yes, because uh, we, do, we unfortunately, we will burn. But the, every, every, every memory that I have has got just fun and laughter. You know, if you want to change the quality of your life or just re, reset what's really important, the best, best tonic you can possibly do is go to Uganda. Thanks, Lily. I was giggling away there, but I had my microphone muted. Great stories. Yeah, I remember that, Lily. I mean, it was like a scene from The Sound of Music. I mean, the, the hill, when you say the hills are alive, they literally was on like a, a mountainside that we were yeah. <laughs> coming up the side of it. It's yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. We weren't fit enough, Martin. I don't think we're, we're still fit enough, but it's genuinely correct. We need to, to walk more and drive less. Yeah. I remember David Baker and, Car and Chris Greaves performing David and Goliath. That was that's one of my still one of my favorite memories of that. Very fierce, very fierce battle that was. Do you remember that, that David? That was it. Yeah, yeah, thrilling, thrilling time. I mean, it, it just I just enjoyed like as the as the team would set up, you get more and more people come and gather around this kind of what became like an amphitheater. Like it's there's there's no better place to do drama than in than in Africa, in my opinion. But but like more and more people would gather around until. It got to the point where Goliath appeared with his stilts, like and and trousers. Oh, he was on stilts. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. To <laughs> and so suddenly, all the kids that had run to the front, some of whom had never seen a Mzungu, in, you know, before, suddenly saw this massive one, and they just pegged it to the back. So there was then this kind of massive amounts of of like fear um, in the crowd. But so that by the time I had my foot on Chris G's back. Uh, on, and having chopped his head off and won a victory like the crowd were just just it was just like nothing else like a reaction and it really helped me to push further and harder onto Chris with my <laughs> foot it really did inspire me always always the hero David <laughs> <laughs> we had um, Paul McGee on stilts doing that in Tanzania and um, he was um, had this Scottish tartan cap on <laughs> with the fake funny hair <laughs> He loved acting, uh, Paul, didn't he? He was, he yeah. was totally, in, totally in his comfort zone. You know, he was, he was a man who was made to act and to build up the part. Talk about slight overacting, but brilliant, absolutely brilliant, Hannah.
So I remember walking down the street in Dallas Lund with the stills and they've got little camouflage khaki wellies on the stills, on the bottom of the stills. And people thought we'd got guns. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Dora, yeah. I, remember, I remember you when you went to live in Cassessi. You go for three months. I can't remember. It was about three months. Yeah, three months. And then, yeah. and then, and then you gave me a little tour of, where, of Peter's house where you were staying. And I saw the what was called the bathroom, but... The bath was black. It had no no enamel on it. It was complete. How you lived there for three months, I really don't know. Like That's not the bathroom I knew. <laughs> the bathroom I was using had a proper bath. Oh. Ah, you had a special one just well, for you then. Well, what was weird is after about um, three or four weeks, I thought no one else is using this bathroom. Why not? Because, you know, it's not just me. But, oh, no, no, we think everybody in the UK has their own bathroom. So that is yours. I said, no. Oh, gosh family oh. to use it so they did after that and it's oh how oh. sweet how oh, sweet yeah yeah brilliant i'd brilliant. love to hear from from the ugandan team I, I if you have any impact memories or anything that you'd like to share i'd love to give you a bit of space to do that but no pressure obviously are they, are they still on <laughs> they are here i can see them but i can't hear anyone ah here we go, oh, here we go. The microphone. Microphone. yeah and and Morris, I see you there too. I haven't forgotten you. I I, I see you on your connection. You feel free to jump in. Yeah. Oh, thanks to everyone. Uh, it's been nice meeting everyone. The team in the UK, our team in Uganda, and the sponsors and relishers of Africa. Uh, to this uh, 20th celebrate 20th anniversary celebration. My best memory with that Africa. Uh, it's when uh, we officially opened Cathay Kindergarten in Mayuri, and uh, during that event, I was an MC uh, with the co MC being hurried. Uh, somehow I had fear, <laughs> even because it was my first time to be an MC of an event. I even uh, somehow stagnant on how to sing the Ugandan. And it's like wow, <laughs> so that's my best memory. Yeah. Morris, you did great dancing that day. We had a, an amazing girl who danced, who was dancing, <laughs> and you were you were a great dancer that day. You were, you were great. I think we've lost Morris. Is somebody from Mexico? Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, my greatest memory of Africa. <laughs> That's so, 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 so amazing. Go, Daisy. Go, Daisy. Okay. <laughs> my great memory in Act for Africa um, is when we, we had an overland truck that came in with um, a team from UK. And we had to travel all around um, the communities in Jinja, and we went to a certain community in in um, in, in the central region. And when we went there, <laughs> we had gone to to for an, an activity, and we had done overnight there. But they had told us in that place <laughs> they had witch dance night dancers. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so when we went there, we had to put our tents, and I was worried anytime they'd be coming for us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because they said, here people are, are night dancers, and anytime they can come and this, uh, do anything to you. <laughs> so I was like, anytime they are coming. <laughs> and, and, but it was fun. We, we, we were... I, I, there were so many people, we had all tents around and it was okay. It wasn't like they had said that people would be coming for us since they are night dancers. And it was a good trip. We had fun. We ministered to the people and it was so good. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, one thing that I remember, it is just a few years back in the hill, who are implementing the hill project and uh, it was a time to 
because we have a, we had we had an activity of giving goats to the women, the groups. So <clears throat> time came and uh, one of our suppliers was not was not anywhere to be seen. We went to his farm, waited, and he kept on saying, I'm, I'm on my way, I'm on my way coming. And uh, <laughs> the guy arrived at uh, around 5, 5 p.m. And uh, the women in the group, they are eagerly waiting for us. And this is a group which was about two hours away from where we are picking the goats. So I, I was like, guys, we need to, we need to go. <laughs> it was crazy driving from a point, from a farm to, to a destination of two hours. And where the farm, farm was to our homes was about um, 45 minutes. So we contemplated, should we go home? Where will the goats sleep? <laughs> where, where shall we put the goats? They are parked in the car. <laughs> so we had to drive and we go to that place. It was around 7 p.m. <laughs> and we had to give out we had to give out the goats at 7 p.m. in the night. <laughs> it was really crazy. And we had to drive from that point to our homes about two and a half hours, three hours, and the roads were so were so bad. Well but we, you know, we kept on moving. <laughs> Um, I just want to applaud the team here. We we do what we do because we 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 don't we don't do what we do because we we want to be paid. But it, it's a great ministry. It is a great ministry in our hearts first. And uh, if we are looking at uh, the remunerations that we get from Act for Africa, we wouldn't be here. But uh, it's a, uh, actual Africa is on our heart. And uh, we want even to upload um, our sponsors, those who have given a hand, really. And uh, the other thing, not until we started uh, the well being session, sessions with the girls with the ladies recently, with a new project that we are implementing at Cathy Center. Um, there are many things that uh, I didn't realize that I have within me. And uh, some of those things have started coming out. And uh, what makes me happy is to see a young woman being helped, a young girl being helped to transform her life, really. I'm so grateful for that. And uh, even when I know I leave Act for Africa, I will be, my heart will be at peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Harriet, <laughs> and uh, uh, when I joined Act for Africa, the slogan was dramatically different, and personally, I don't think I'm dramatic at all. So <laughs> one time we went to a community, Daisy is very dramatic, and then there was this other Esther. So we went to our community and we had to act out, I think a drama about HIV transmission and then the prevention. So as, we, as my part came in, 
I think Daisy and Esther did something so funny at the stage. I had to laugh and everything ended there <laughs> because I wasn't dramatic. Up to now, I still remember. I, I labored so much to act, but uh, I failed and I always opted for the being the counselor in any drama, any role play, because I thought that was a little okay for me. So <laughs> that stood out as a memory that was so funny. And um, of course, uh, as we celebrate 20 years, uh, I would like to say this. I just kept thinking about it since morning. Um, three years before I joined Act for Africa, I met someone, I was thinking about him as like, what name should I give him? He, he, was he a destined changer, destined helper? He, he had helped me to see a different part of me that I hadn't even seen. And even the people around me, the family I grew up with hadn't seen. So th three years uh, after me meeting him, I joined Act for Africa. And when I joined, I was beginning to think about the things he had told me. It was at a very initial stage. And uh, today, as I was thinking about the celebration, I was just thankful that all the things I had from that gentleman have been birthed in Act for Africa. And as Patrick was sharing the achievement, I was like, hey, he doesn't know. I'm one of the beneficiaries. As I minister to people, I've seen myself grow. I've seen myself improve and become better every day. And the person I'm supposed to be has been unveiled and revealed to me every day. And I'm thinking today, if there is anyone who has benefited from the work I have done in Act for Africa, it is me. Before anyone else celebrates it, I, as an individual, as Harriet, I have benefited. I've become a better mother. I've become a better person all over. I know I'm not uh, uh, there at 100%, but I should say everything about me has been unveiled while in Act for Africa. And at this moment, I would like to thank you, Lily. Uh, I think the first time you came to Ginger, you went back and you were asked to write something about every team member. I vividly remember the things you wrote about me. I do remember them. And I just keep thinking, I, oh, I hope I had kept a script because I don't remember all the statements, but I remember the strong elements that came out in that write-up and they have pushed me and they have made me. So thank you so much. Happy anniversary, Act for Africa. We are proud that we have contributed something in Act for Africa. Thank you everyone for being a part of this. You have made us not with finances, but the things you have shared and the belief you have put in us. You have sent projects that we even thought we are not able to implement. And as we begin on implementing them, we have seen us change. Thank you so, so much. Harriet, we love you. Um, we love, I mean, we absolutely adore the, the entire team. I think the thing that is so amazing is every single one of you has been touched by HIV. Um, in terms of losing relatives. I remember the first time I went with Patrick to meet uh, his family, to meet Christine, his grandmother, and her family graveyard was the size of what would be a village graveyard here in the UK. But when I talk about the fun, Harriet, and, and if, you know, it, it is the same for every one of you, I only ever remember you with joy, with absolute joy, the fun that we have. If you've not been out to Uganda, guys, yet, go it will change your life it will change your perspective things that you think are important in the UK will just be completely diminished but Harriet my memory of you as always being a strong and you are a dramatic woman I have seen you do drama that has been absolutely fantastic 
my joy of spending time with each and every one of you. But Harriet, you know, you are you are have stepped into the shoes and become the woman that you were supposed to become. I am so proud, not just of you, but of, of Martha, of Daisy, of every single one of you. You have changed our lives too. Love you dearly. Okay, the memories that I have in the 20 years, uh, the moments we used to visit the sick people with HIV, we could go there, wash their clothes, clean their houses. That brought an impact in my life to feel exactly what we are supposed to do, to feel the way they feel. And I want to thank Martin for the vision, for the conviction God put on them. And really, really what you are doing is very great for our sisters that you are taking care of. That really shows that you really have a heart for this hurting world. I just want to thank God for you. And I want to say that God bless you. And also these girls that we are taking, that the young girls that we are taking care of training right now, they are more or less like these girls, these people that had HIV. They really need our help. They really need our support in order for them to come up people who have value in the society. I just want to thank those that have been supporting the programs. I pray that God blesses you big and give you more years. And when our generation is over, I pray that our children will take over to carry on the fight. God bless you. Okay, Martha, thank you. That's brilliant. You know, Martha's been the rock, the rock of, of because she handles the finance for us. And we, we, we know that we can trust the finance being handled so, so well because Martha does a brilliant job with it. And she's done it over the years. And um, she's very fierce with it, you know, that you've got to bring a receipt. If you don't bring a receipt, you don't, you don't get your money. But she's great. But actually, the, the one thing I remember, Martha, is Martha, Martha's, she's quite serious a lot of the time. You think she's very serious. But when we played volleyball, she laughed her head off. She was laughing her head off, weren't you, when we played volleyball together. It was, that was really great fun. Yeah, lovely to see it. Thank you, Martha. Okay. I also want to take this opportunity to send my appreciation to the UK team, to the people who have supported Act for Africa um, since day one. And the, the first person I remember is Martin, Jaja Martin. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> we are so grateful. We love you, Martin. We thank God for the vision that you, God gave you and you ran with it. And we also came part of it. And we are so grateful for these 20 years. We thank God for that. We thank, for, we thank everyone. Lily, you're a great woman of God. <laughs> thank you for all the great work that you're doing. We are so thankful. We, ha we have no words to express our thanks, but we are too thank thankful for the team in UK, for everybody who has joined. People started and some of them are not have exited. We send appreciation. Thank you so much. And we believe God is still taking us to another level. After the 22 years, we are just saying, Ebenezer, this is the father the Lord has brought us, but he's taking us to another level. We just believe that. May God bless every one of you for your hard work. Madeline, I just come in. Thank you. We thank Dora. We thank everybody. Many people have been coming here and supporting us, encouraging us, giving us skills being trained we thank god for you all god bless you oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no 
No, well, I think at this moment, as Daisy was talking, I, I felt it's so important to just say thank you to Madeline. You came in with a new approach. As Act Africa is taking another, another phase, you came in with an approach of getting each one of us a personal touch. And to me, that was so outstanding for you as a leader. You took an initiative and had a, a meeting with each one of us at an indi individual level. And I know whatever you had from each one of us is what you're using to shape Act for Africa. Thank you so, so, so much. God bless you. Oh, thank you so much, Harriet. Thank you for that. I can see you guys, this has been so fabulous. I've loved hearing from all of you. It's now two o'clock. I think we, ah, Patrick, you're holding the microphone. Yeah, Were you about yeah. to speak? I'm not going to cut Patrick off. You're allowed to speak. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to be very brief. Uh, one, my memory is just having a look at some of the faces uh, on screen brings lots of memories and some level of nostalgia from where all this journey began and where we are. Uh, looking at Hannah, Dora, Baker, Lillian, Martin themselves, those, that, that there are so many profound memories of our early years as an organization. Uh, one of them is the Overland Track, as one of my colleagues has beautifully said, but also those very interesting skits that we began with. I mean, the, 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 the theater for development skits that were both educative and entertaining, but also passing on key and interesting messages. Uh, I, I can't forget the Don't Touch, what people, what the excitement it brought in the communities, but also on how David uh, acted Goliath, Baker, uh, yes, uh, acted Goliath, his, his, his way of acting, his seriousness on stage, and the excitement it all drew, I think to me is such a profound memory. Thank you very much. <laughs> and oh, Martha has reminded me of, of, of um, Liagova, Mrs. Liagova knew. Is she, is she, is she, is she on screen? I don't know whether she's on screen. I don't know that she's been in position to join us from Scotland. She was on earlier, Patrick. She's had to leave, I think. Okay. But anyway, those are all profound memories. Just seeing the people on screen and all that we did in the early years of this organization to me is very profound and it brings very remarkable memories. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. I, I'm just so touched by everything that's been said today. It's been so lovely to see each and every one of you. We have come up to the end of our time, so I'm afraid we'll have to cut it off just for the sake of, <laughs> yeah, I know you're renting this space there in Uganda for one thing, uh, but I just want to say as a closing remark, uh, Harriet has said that through her work with Act for Africa, she's been made into the person that God always intended her to be. And what's such a, just a beautiful, sort of full circle experience is that now when we speak to the adolescent mothers in Uganda through the program that's being delivered by this team we are seeing that they are being brought to a point where they can be the people that they were meant to be they've come from a point of abuse they've come from poverty neglect they've had so many horrific experiences but they are not victims they are the leaders in their own lives and we are seeing them blossom into leaders in their communities in their families and they'll be the ones who take it forward in the future. They're, they're the, the mothers of the next generation. So I just want to leave on that very positive note that even though times might be tough with COVID-19, even though times are tough in lots of ways, we're really bringing something really profound to these communities and, and to all of us as well. It's really touching all of our hearts as well as the communities that we're a part of. So just thank you everyone so much for being a part of this. Thank you for coming today. And I really hope I'll be in touch with each and every one of you soon. Thanks Bless. everyone. Bye. Bye, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye everybody, bye. bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. -bye. bye.